London Hammer. On a summer afternoon in 1936, Max Hahn and his wife were walking along Red Creek in London, Texas, when they spotted something peculiar, a piece of wood protruding from a chunk of rock. What they found would become one of archaeology's most contentious artifacts, a hammer that some would claim challenges our understanding of human history. When the Hahn's son finally cracked open the stone a decade later, he revealed a hammerhead with properties that seemed to defy easy explanation. The hammer itself seems ordinary enough. Six inches of iron head with a wooden handle, similar to tools once used by 19th century miners. However, analysis showed the metal to be 96.6% iron, a purity that some claim would have been impossible to achieve with 19th century technology. Strangely, the wooden handle seemed to be partially fossilized. But it's the rock encasing the hammer that has sparked the most debate. The limestone concretion holding it has been variously dated to the Cretaceous period, the Ordovician, and the Silurian, geological spans stretching back hundreds of millions of years before humans walked the Earth. In 1983, the hammer found its most passionate advocate in Carl Bau, a creationist who purchased it for his Creation Evidence Museum. Bau dubbed it the London Artifact and presented it as evidence of an advanced pre-flood civilization. Perhaps the most telling aspect of the London Hammer might be what hasn't been done to it. Despite numerous requests, the Hammer's wooden handle has never undergone comprehensive carbon dating. When a limited test was finally conducted in the late 1990s, the results suggested the wood was no more than 700 years old. Geologists have a simpler explanation. The Hammer was likely dropped by a frontier craftsman in the 19th century, after which mineral-rich water seeped around it forming a natural concrete. Similar processes have encased World War II artifacts in stone in mere decades. As Red Creek winds its way past London, Texas, the hammer remains on display in its museum case. While the evidence strongly suggests it's a 19th century artifact, definitive answers will remain elusive unless the hammer is made available for further testing. Are you as creeped out as I am by companies that seem to know way too much about your life? Tired of annoying robocalls? Here's how you can fight back against the source. Today's video is sponsored by Incogni, the service that protects your personal information from data brokers who are out there collecting and selling everything from your name and phone number to your app location data and browsing habits. Some even compile lists with dystopian names like Rural and Barely Making It. Your data is probably already available to be purchased or stolen in a data breach. It's even worse in the US where search sites publish detailed profiles online, making it easy for scammers, employers, or anyone else to find out more about you than you'd like. That's where Incogni comes in. Incogni takes on data brokers for you, navigating laws and regulations to demand they delete your personal information and making sure it stays gone. It's fully automated, so you can keep your data safe without wasting hours on tedious requests. Tired of robocalls? Incogni cuts them off at the source. Worried about your online reputation? Incogni helps you take back control of what people can find about you. Just sign up, grant them permission to work on your behalf, and let them do the rest while keeping you updated every step of the way. Visit the link below at incogni.com slash dark5 and use the code dark5 to get started with 60% off. That's dark F-I-V-E for 60% off. Your data belongs to you. Let's keep it that way. Dorchester Pot. A massive explosion shook Meeting House Hill on a crisp morning in 1851, sending chunks of ancient rock cascading through the air of Dorchester, Massachusetts. But when the dust settled, the workers who set off the blast discovered something that would spark one of America's most peculiar archaeological mysteries. Among the scattered debris of shattered rock, they found an impossible object, a metallic vessel split nearly in two its silver inlaid surface gleaming with delicate flowers and vines. The object, which came to be known as the Dorchester Pot, was a bell-shaped vessel that stood just four and a half inches tall. Its zinc and silver alloy body bore six floral bouquets, meticulously inlaid in pure silver, with a wreath encircling its base. 
Most stunningly, the workers claimed it had emerged from a layer of pudding stone dated between 570 and 593 million years old, a time when the most complex life on Earth consisted of simple marine organisms. The story, reported in Scientific American in June 1852, immediately seized the public's attention. How could a clearly manufactured object emerge from rock formed in the Ediacaran period, hundreds of millions of years before humans walked the Earth? Some saw the artifact as evidence of ancient civilizations lost to time. Hindu creationist Michael Cremo pointed to it as proof of advanced metalworking in North America more than 600 million years ago. Others wove it into biblical narratives, suggesting it survived a great flood that reshaped the Earth. But archaeologists tell a different story. Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews notes that the pot was found loose in the explosion debris, not embedded in solid rock, as often claimed. Its design is unmistakably Victorian, bearing striking similarities to contemporary candlesticks and pipe holders. Italian researcher Biagio Catalano even identified an almost identical Indian pipe holder in a Mumbai museum. Perhaps the most fitting twist in this tale is that the pot itself has vanished. Shortly after its discovery, it disappeared into history, leaving behind only written accounts, a single photograph of dubious authenticity and endless speculation. Nampa Figure In July 1889, a crew drilling a well in Nampa, Idaho, unearthed an object that seemed to defy the limits of history. As they worked at a depth of over 300 feet, a sand pump brought up a small one and a half inch clay figurine, shaped like a woman, adorned with faint markings of jewelry and clothing. The layer in which it was found reportedly dated back two million years, according to a team of archeologists called to examine the site. If true, this would place the figure far beyond the arrival of humans in the Americas, let alone their capacity to craft such objects. But was this artifact a miraculous window into an ancient past or an elaborate hoax? The figurine, called the Nampa image, appeared remarkably intricate. Analysis revealed its reddish hue likely came from iron oxide, either through natural deposition or intentional firing. Early supporters, such as geologist George Frederick Wright, argued the artifact was genuine, attributing its depth to ancient geological processes. Wright believed flooding and volcanic activity had buried the artifact in sediment millions of years ago. However, critics questioned how such a delicate figure could have remained intact while being pulled through layers of sand and rock by an aggressive steam pump. John W. Powell, a prominent geologist, dismissed the figurine as a 19th century Native American doll, likely made by the Pocatello tribe. Powell reported that locals had openly joked about the artifact being a hoax, meant to dupe gullible tenderfeet unfamiliar with the region's history. Subsequent investigations found no evidence of similar artifacts at comparable depths. Still, creationists seized upon the object as evidence of old earth creationism, a belief that attempts to connect the Bible with scientific evidence. Other theorists proposed links to lost civilizations or time travel. Later studies added to the skepticism. Archaeologist Keith Fitzpatrick Matthews found additional inconsistencies, noting that similar iron-stained clay balls were located far above the basalt layer, suggesting the figurine had likely been displaced by the drilling process or natural geological shifts. Today, the Nampa image resides in the Idaho State Historical Society Museum, surrounded by questions it may never answer. Kosar Artifact In February of 1961, Three rock collectors scaling the sun-baked hills near Olancha, California, couldn't have known that one of that day's discoveries was about to ignite one of archaeology's most peculiar and popular mysteries. The next day, when Mike Mikesell's diamond-edged saw blade cut into what he thought was a simple geode, it revealed a perfectly cylindrical piece of porcelain with a metal shaft at its center, all encased in a mysterious matrix of hardened material. The discovery quickly became known as the Koso Artifact, named for the mountain range where it was found. Its peculiarities were immediately apparent. The metal shaft was magnetic, the porcelain cylinders seemed manufactured rather than natural, and the outer casing appeared to contain fossil shells. 
Virginia Maxi, one of the discoverers, claimed a geologist dated the object to at least 500,000 years old, an impossible timeline that would predate most of human civilization, much less any advanced manufacturing techniques. The artifact's reputation grew in the shadows of mainstream archaeology. It appeared on Leonard Nimoy's In Search of television series and became a cornerstone of popular alternative archaeology. Creationists championed it as evidence against evolution, while others saw proof of ancient advanced civilizations or even extraterrestrial visitors. Wallace Lane, another of the original discoverers, kept it in his home with a $25,000 price tag, a fortune in the 1960s, but refused to let anyone examine it closely. For decades, the Kosar artifact remained sealed in speculation until 1999, when researchers Pierre Stromberg and Paul Heinrich had a simple but brilliant idea. They showed original x-rays of the object to members of the Spark Plug Collectors of America. Chad Windham, the organization's president, recognized it instantly as a 1920s champion spark plug, the kind commonly used in Ford Model T engines. In 2018, after decades of speculation, the object resurfaced, and a physical examination by a University of Washington geologist confirmed its identity. Additionally, he found no evidence of the ancient fossil shells that had once seemed to hint at its impossible age. Today, the Kosar artifact rests in Seattle's Pacific Science Center, part of an exhibition called What is Reality? Ayud Wedge In 1973, construction workers digging near Romania's Merej River unearthed something puzzling, buried 33 feet beneath the soil. Alongside two fossilized mastodon bones, they found a strange chunk of metal that seemed out of place, as if it didn't belong in the natural world. The object, roughly 8 inches long and 5 inches wide, is made of 90% aluminum and includes traces of 11 other metals. It's remarkably lightweight and features concave depressions suggesting it was manufactured as part of a larger, more complex system. Initial tests dated the artifact to at least 250,000 years old, a timeline that defies logic, given that aluminum production only began around 200 years ago. How could such an object exist in the same stratum as fossils tens of thousands of years old? Romanian ufologists were quick to label the Ayud wedge as evidence of extraterrestrial visitation. Some claimed it was a fragment of a UFO, citing its mysterious composition and inexplicable age. Adding fuel to the fire, the artifact's discovery was reportedly kept secret during Romania's communist era, leading skeptics to speculate about government cover-ups and secret technology. Local historian Mihai Wittenberger suggested the object was a piece of landing gear from a World War II Messerschmitt Me 262 fighter plane. Its aluminum makeup and mechanical design seem consistent with mid-20th century aviation technology. But this theory raised its own questions. How could a 20th century artifact end up buried beneath layers of Earth associated with ancient fossils? Nigel Watson, author of the UFO Investigations Manual, offered yet another possibility. The wedge might be debris from an early satellite that crashed into the Earth. If true, this could explain its secrecy in the 1970s, when space technology was highly secret due to Cold War paranoia. Today, the Ayud Wedge sits in the History Museum of Cluj-Napoca, labeled with the ambiguous phrase, Origin Still Unknown. Do you think any of these out-of-time objects are real? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.